Hello all, welcome again. This is a session on STM32 H7 and the topic today is FDCAN, that is Flexible Data Rate Controller Area Network. Mm. <coughs> if you did not subscribe to our channel, please kindly subscribe to our channel by clicking subscribe button and for your personal notification, click on bell icon. The Flexible Data Control Area Network is a standard serial differential bus broadcast interface that enables the microcontroller to commute, communicate with uh, external devices connected to the same network bus. The FTCAN interface is highly configurable enable, enabling nodes to each connect using just two wires. Um, applications benefit from multi-master concept with message priority, object oriented communication that means no node addressing but uh, content identification, real time capability with the low message transfer latency and system wide message consistency, error detection that is uh, error detection and management mechanism. <laughs> Let's have a quick look at CAN subsystem features in STM H7. Uh, family. So two FD CAN controllers, they can be connected to two different buses. CAN protocol version 2.0a and b and CAN FD protocol version 1.0 uh, compliance with ISO 11898-1-2015-4. FD, uh, FD with max, CAN FD with max, 64 data bytes supported bit rates or arbitration bit rate up to 1 Mbps, data bit rate up to 8 Mbps, which is remarkable. <coughs> I mean M bits per second, 8 megabits per second. RAM with 10 kilobytes RAM allocated in section in function of the specific needs in terms of filters um, or uh, first in five, first out buffers, triggers and of the number of controllers used. Maximum number of elements managed by IP or up to 128 elements that is 11 bit filter up to 64 elements that is 29 bit uh, filter to receive um, FIFOs of uh, up to 64 elements up to 64 elements receive buffers up to 32 elements transmit buffers up to 32 elements transmit event FIFO that is first in first out up to 64 triggers for TT CAN supports maskable interrupts per controller two independent interrupt lines 30 fully configurable interrupt flags uh, power down support CAN error logging AutoSAR and J1939 support separate uh, signaling on uh, reception of high priority messages TT CAN FD CAN 1 only not the FD CAN 2 TT CAN Protocol level 1 and level 2 completely in hardware. Common clock uh, calibration unit which can be used to generate a calibrated <coughs> clock. So the subsystem supports two FD CANs which we already discussed mm, except for clock calibration unit and RAM which are shared. These two controllers are independent except for clock calibration unit and RAM which are shared and have the same functionality except the TT CAN which is supported by FT CAN 1. These controllers support both the basic extended CAN protocol version 2.0 a and others which we already discussed. The clock calibration, the total amount of memory that would be required to support the fully configuration full configuration of a single controller is 17.4 k bytes kilobytes is the max 17.4 kilobytes is the max as only 10 k byte ram memory is available some trade off have to be made in functions of the application each controller also supports two independent maskable interrupts each one having 30 fully configurable flags. So the clock calibration unit can be optionally used to generate a calibrated clock for both FD CAN 1 and FD CAN 2 controllers. 
it uses the hsi internal rc clock and the pll clock pll by evaluating can messages received by the fd can one okay so after this we'll see fd can operating modes okay so here are the uh, fd can operating modes sleep mode normal mode initialization mode here normal mode is associated with various features like fd can lfm uh, and or ffm and classic can this is the sequence actually tt can that is dar mode uh, restricted bus monitoring test modes are available in normal mode and sleep mode and initialization mode so uh, it can be to and fro from initialization mode and uh, sleep mode from the reset so fd can has three main operating modes initialization normal and sleep after a hardware reset the fd can enters the initialization mode via a software in this mode the peripheral must be configured bit timings and ram allocation in bit bit timing configuration the rate is set then the sampling point is adjusted according to the actual series bus line the can controller then synchronizes itself with can bus by waiting for 11 consecutive recessive bits when the can is in normal mode the user can select different specific modes classic can mode fd can mode fd can mode means it can be long frame and or fast frame mode ffm lfm okay tt can mode that is time triggered communication in this mode the automatic retransmission features must be disabled that is dar mode and restricted mode the controller is able to receive data frames and acknowledge them but does not send frames it can be used in applications that adopts themselves to different can bit rates bus monitoring mode the controller is able to receive data frames but cannot acknowledge them it can be used to analyze the traffic on a can bus without affecting it by transmission of the dominant bits and finally the test modes external loop back mode you can say the controller treats its own transmitted messages as received messages internal loop back mode the controller can test can be tested without affecting a running can system upon a cpu request the fd can in sleep mode which operates at a low power so we should note that in sleep mode the internal pull up is active on pin can tx c a n t x that is transmission if you understood this concept let's move on to the can subsystem subsystem block diagram have a quick look about the points which i mentioned after this we'll move on to the can subsystem block diagram all right if you have made a note of this then let's move to the can sub subsystem block diagram this is how the can subsystem block diagram is you can see the various blocks one is ram plus arbiter clock calibration unit and fd can one registers so we have a can core protocol handler and then can1 tx can1 rx is out so tx controller and tx prioritization frame synchronization in rx controller acceptance filter would be there right so here the ram arbiter is driven by apb so this simplified block diagram of can subsystem in a single fd configuration shows its basic functional and control features three types of registers one is control configuration registers uh, filter uh, configuration registers and status registers 
time triggered registers are showed independently as they are only present in FD CAN1 controller. A fully configurable RAM memory stores all the filters and messages needed by the TX and RX handlers. The allocation of these different sections is done by programming the RAM configuration registers. Okay, then the TX handler manages prioritization and frame, syn uh, frame synchronization before sending the messages to the CAN core protocol handler. The RX handler receives messages from CAN core and accepts or not the message function of the filters <coughs> loaded from the RAM. Finally, a clock calibration unit can be used to generate a calibrated clock from the HSI internal RC oscillator and the PLN by evaluating CAN messages received by the FT CAN1. Filters and triggers are directly sent by the CPU through the APB bus. So we just saw a single CAN configuration. How about a double dual CAN configuration? Just make a note of the points. Just I made it in my while explaining the single CAN configuration. After this, we'll move on to the dual CAN configuration. Okay, let's move on to the dual CAN configuration. This is how the dual con CAN configuration. In the single CAN configuration, we have seen CAN1 underscore TX, CAN1 underscore RX handler. We we further in dual CAN configuration, we, we have to deal with CAN2 RX and CAN2 TX. So this simplified block diagram of 50 CAN in a dual CAN configuration shows its basic functional and control features compared to the single configuration. We can see that the register map TX handler, RX handler and CAN core are duplicated. Note, nevertheless, that the time triggered registers are only present on FD CAN1. I repeat, the, we should note that the time trigger TT registers are only present for FD CAN1. Flexible data, right? CAN1. Okay, you can't find it in the CAN2. So the RAM memory also stores two sets of data section, one for FD CAN1 and the other for FD CAN2. You can see there are two data sections. Okay. And finally the clock calibration unit when used generates a clock for both FD CAN1 and FD CAN2. Now you could have made difference between the single CAN config and the uh, dual CAN config. So please note down the points for if required. <laughs> then we'll see some application examples of the CAN. And then we'll quickly move on to the interrupts, CAN interrupts, FD CAN interrupts. Okay. So these are all the examples. You can see a radiotherapy machine that is a medical domain and robotics or robotic arms. Uh, shipping automotive and uh, network devices. So CAN was originally designed for an automotive application but it is, uh, is nowadays also used in many other contexts. Right. Let's move on to the interrupts. We spoke already about uh, there are two independent interrupt lines per controller and uh, can be enabled or separated from 30 configurable flag flags below right so have a look at it the ft and fd can controller peripheral provides two independent interrupts the can subsystem provides then four independent interrupt lines for the controller one interrupt line for the clock calibration unit you can see in the in this slide the complete list of possible interrupt events like access to reserved address, protocol error in data phase, so protocol error in arbitration phase, watchdog, bus off, warning status, error passive, 
error logging overflow a bit error corrected bit error uncorrected message stored to uh, dedicated rx buffers timed out occurred mm, message ram access failure timestamp wrap wrap around tx event fifo element calibration state changed <coughs> calibration was doc event so uh, corresponding in interrupt event was given have a look at it then we will click quickly move on to the low power modes of the can so here is an overview of can sub system low power mode configurations the device is not able to perform any communications in stop or standby mode it is important to ensure that all can traffic is completed before the peripheral enters stop or standby mode let's see uh, what's the debug support it is having while cpu core is in debug mode ft can remains in its normal functioning mode the registers of type reset on read or set on read are disabled reading them will not affect their value okay in particular reception continues as normal and this may lead to reception overrun errors when fifos or uh, buffers are full registers of the type reset on read and uh, reading them will not affect their values so let's quickly look at some can related peripherals like rcc that is reset and clock controller and uh, nvic network uh, uh, nested vector interrupt controller gpio that is general purpose input output and debug support in the upcoming uh, upcoming uh, videos or sessions okay thank you for watching please subscribe to our channel by clicking subscribe button and uh, uh, press bell icon for your personal notifications thank you let's catch up in next communication session probably i square c